Hi all, I have a fascinating game to show you from TSEC. Leela playing with the white pieces against Ethereal. We have the opening book set as D4 E6, an invitation for the French defense with this move order. And in fact, E4 is played. So we have a French defense, Winnower variation. And it carries on. This is pretty standard Winnower French defense moves. And here, after Bishop E2, this is the end of the book, Queen C7. Leela castles kingside and the theoretical book move for black is bishop d7 it's not actually to routinely castle kingside believe it or not as an example of play a4 which is the uh, diagonal to try and celebrate the bishop without a counterpart on these dark squares that black has weakened fisher was fond of this move uh, for example, f6, e takes, g takes, at least gives black a little road to white's king. And if c4, black castles, although technically this position is an advantage for white, uh, it seems kind of interesting and chances for both sides if it were at least two human beings play it, playing it on both sides. But instead of this bishop d7 move, in fact, Ethereal without opening book here, just castles. So is this actually wrong? And is it easy to prove it's wrong? Because, you know, for example, Bishop D3, sometimes black can cope with the threat on this diagonal. Maybe sometimes of H6 and then push the bishop back sometimes. So let's see what happens anyway. Rook B1 is played. This is a very curious move, an innovation move as far as I can tell. Usually people play the Fisher style move a4 to try and get on this diagonal and this is how I often play uh, when I'm white against the French defense winner because it seems pretty logical to me pretty convincing that these dark squares are something to be tapped into and yeah it's it's an interesting move uh, so for example b6 bishop a3 you know knight a5 white might be slightly better here there's some pressure on black. But this rook b1, it's curious. It's like a mysterious rook move. We have h6, and this is a new move in this position, it seems. Uh, quite often in this position, bishop d7 has been uh, seen before. Well, when I say quite often, I mean in this particular position. Uh, Earlier, you know, black, as I mentioned, played bishop d7 and castles queenside quite often. But here, um, for example, h4, b6, h5, this is kind of dangerous for black uh, in any case here, as an example of bishop d7, because uh, white could uh, perhaps threaten h6. If black plays h6, then white is doing kind of well, maybe can open up this g file soon and if we get this situation bishop g3 keeping the pen white well, could end up with uh, a significant advantage but anyway that does seem interesting bishop d7 but h6 yes is it calling for white to open up the g file one key thing is if you can get an open road to the opponent's king usually one is uh, happy and optimistic does this move h6 act as some sort of lever for g4 g5 it seems Leela thinks so and plays g4 and we see now bishop d7 and now king h1 so white is actually getting ready to use that g file a6 bishop d3 and now we see knight a7 in fact if c4 this just makes things worse for black that tension release here white would have a very nice position indeed without anything to worry about it seems or very little to worry about so we have here knight a7 and now knight h4 and this gets really interesting black does actually release the tension there are ominous threats i guess here like f4 f5 or g5 so c4 bishop e2 but now an even more radical pawn move from a very g5 so not only casting on this side, but this pawn chain doesn't ring a bell for me in over the board chess. And in fact, this tension release also, it kind of usually signals someone kind of potentially inexperienced in these sort of positions. 
it does seem in principle bad, but the proof, as they say, is in the pudding, isn't it? It has to be in chess, uh, even though this might look a bit shaky. How to actually prove it? Well, Lita actually doesn't even move the knight back here. Um, Queen e1 is played. Very interesting. And now bishop a4. If black takes here, queen takes, sorry, queen takes uh, here a later is going to be dangerous off the f4 moves. But immediately bishop takes h6, f4, and then for example like this. And you can see it's going to be super dangerous, in fact, for black. So yeah, it's probably not the greatest idea to do this g takes. So bishop a4, and here get things get even more interesting. Lila just plays f4, and the thing is about this c2 pawn not protecting it. It actually, in a way, in a funny way, justifies rook b1 because potentially you can see a rook coming across the second rank to help in the attack. And in fact, Ethereal did assist this idea. Bishop takes c2. It was only a doubled pawn, but isn't the bishop coming to e4 at least the nuisance? We have bishop f3, which does mean a kind of technical, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, a technical weakness for the last move to be tapped into. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because black's king seems to be under siege here with this very, very menacing, aggressive pawn structure and the pieces behind it. So f takes g5, just offering an exchange sack. This bishop was. I mean, if it does take it, it's no longer to be defending the king in its absence. Now it has basically weakened light squares quite a bit. So queen takes f1, knight g6, and then we have queen h3, knight c6. So black's position doesn't seem to be that inspiring. We have g takes h6, queen d8, and now g5, knight e7. If rook e8 as another example, then bishop h5 looks dangerous, for example, like this. And white has options like this, for example, to smash through. If king takes h7 and being played there, then g6, queen h6 check. And, you know, the rook's ready as well to come in, like mentioned before, on that second rank. So that's no good for black. So, yeah, things seem to have gone... Uh, pretty self quite quickly here in this position. Knight C E7 was played. We have Knight takes, F takes, offering the E6 pawn. Uh, so perhaps not wanting the uh, dark square possibilities so much. It's interesting. I mean, there's also Bishop H5. There's a lot of interesting possibilities. But uh, at least it kind of opens the rook, I guess. So we have the E6 pawn being sacrificed, King H8, and now Bishop G4. And now, actually, there's an immediate rook takes b7 idea. So that would be nasty. So b5, we have king g2 taking out the entry point f1 from the rook. But also, sometimes h4, h5 is going to be dangerous here. Queen c8. And Lena obliges for the exchange of queens. So king g3, is the attack carrying on rook f1? If a5 here, as an example, I think white can brew up trouble like this, for example, with e6, bishop e5 check, and black is not able to handle white's attacking potential here. For example, this is just a fictional scenario where the black king gets it. Yeah, it's it's very, very difficult. So let's go back. So we have uh, rook f1. Uh, and now bishop f4, king h7, e6, rook a7, h4, knight e7, bishop d6, we have rook g1 check. Uh, so in this moment here, there's a lot of pressure clearly brewing up. You know, potentially h5, rook h2. In this moment, when rook g1 was, was played, if knight f5 check, as an example, bishop takes, g takes, Rook e2 is strong with the idea of e7, e8. And for example, like this is not doing too many favours for black. If the pawns get going, 
and the king is in trouble, as an example. So, uh, you know, rook g1 was played, not knight f5, and this encourages the, encourages the king to walk up the board a bit to e5. Um, now knight f5 is played. If rook e1 check, perhaps rook e2 is best. And in this position, bishop f3, d5 is weak, and this is very nice for white. So after king e5, knight f5 now was played. We have bishop c5, rook a8, and now this is snapped off. G takes. If rook takes here, then the king can use the d6 square. And it seems, you know, for example, that e7 is going to be strong like this. It's a very big advantage for white. So g takes is played, and we have e7. Here, rook f3, king f6, rook e3. And the game actually ended here kind of suddenly. So quite a short game by Leela standards. Only 40 moves, believe it or not. A very short game by Leela standards. If it continued with h5, then, for example, rook b8, rook g2, white has a winning procedure here in essentially supporting g6 with more effect, for example, or even here, just giving up h6 because of bishop d6. The idea of bishop f4, this picks up material at the very least. And in this position, if, you know, for example, rook takes c4, we just take over there. And if rook e8, we just play check here and we pick up over here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a disaster scenario, essentially, this kind of scenario. I'll take you back to the um, game ends position. So rook e3, fascinating stuff. I think what, to me, what went wrong is the lack of opening book um, doesn't seem to help the classic AB style engines. It seems if it had opening book, it would have played bishop d7. Uh, and then, you know, ideas of f6 and casting queenside would be uh, perhaps in the opening book. A little bit more safety. The way it was played... Casting kingside, yes, it did seem Leela did provide proof, concrete proof, why it could be a bad idea. And even if black hadn't, you know, volunteered h6, white is going to be sometimes playing h4, h5, h6 in any case. So I think the earlier mistake of actually fundamentally casting kingside, uh, funny enough, I know that sounds as though you should in general castle kingside, but in that pawn formation, you know, white has got usually the resource advantage on that side of the board. So it's a very dangerous place in principle to keep the king. It was amazingly demonstrated how there could be king safety issues, such dynamic play, you know, sacrificing the exchange, you know, the C2 pawn the exchange, and, you know, leaving the knight to be taken. And yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful display, but I think fundamentally the mistake might have been castling king's side in this game. So, yeah. The neural networks, I think, might have the edge in the openings uh, to be able to look a, a quite a bit deeper for things like this, this sort of issue. So what do you think about this game? And also the trivia question today, even if you don't know anything about chess, let's feed the neural network engines or algorithms of YouTube. The trivia question today, who is your... Who is your favourite actor? So forget chess. Who is your favourite actor? Okay, that's the the trivia question, which could be interesting to see your answers anyway. Uh, so that's the trivia question of today. Who's your favourite film actor, as in films, as in big films, you know, on the cinema? Favourite actor or, you know, actress, you know, actor, male, female. Okay. That's the trivia question today. And if you want to check out my uh, new course, Kings Crusher TV slash Opening Tango, check that out. Playlist, bit.ly slash Leela Chess. There's also bit.ly slash Stockfish Chess. There's the chat at Kings Crusher TV slash Discord. And if you want to join me for a game, register at bit.ly slash Chess World. Register and I'll be able to invite you for a game. Five days of move. Comments, questions, like, share, subscribe uh, with the notif notification bell. Always welcome. And the trivia question. Who is your favourite film actor? That's 
the question of the day today. Thanks very much.